All right, hello and welcome back everyone. Here we are back for the multicolored portion of the set review. We got a lot of cards to go through. So, uh, reprint from Modern Horizons 1 in Alternate Border was revealed in the last 24 hours. And we have the sketch versions of a couple cards. Um, Arcus Acolyte. This is pretty cool giving all of our other creatures uh, uh, Outlast. As well as having Outlast itself. Uh, combine Chrysalis. Creature tokens you have control, or creatures tokens you control have flying. You can make a 4 4 green beast creature token by sacrificing a token. Uh, this is kind of cool, but I think it's a little too expensive for modern play. Um, Lazatope Chancellor. Whenever you discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, amass two. I kind of like this. I think this card's kind of interesting. I don't know how good it'll be, but I think it's cool. I think it'd be better if it was an enchantment instead of a creature, but yeah. Uh, then we have Rakdos Headliner, Haste, Echo, Discard a Card. That card, I think, is going to be great. Um, it's a 2-mana 3-3 three, three with Echo being discarding a card, which is awesome. That means you can play this on turn 2, turn 3, play Asma, whatever his name is, her name is, their name is. Um, Chainer Nightmare Adept. This was a Commander uh, card from a few years ago. Um, discard a card, you may cast a, ca a creature spell from your graveyard this turn. Activate only once each turn. This is pretty cool. Um, it says you may cast a creature spell, which I could be wrong. So if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments, but I don't think I am. This means you can cast any creature spell from your graveyard. Um, as long as you pay the mana after you discard, which means you don't have to have a target for it. So you can have no creatures in your graveyard and discard a card to activate this ability. Um, then whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste until the end of the turn. Pretty cool. Uh, Silthus Harvest Hand. Uh, I really like uh, her. I wish she wasn't legendary, but I like her. Um, another Enchantress type card. When we cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life and draw a card. Super sweet. Also, I think a 1 2 is really, really good. That means it dodges all the Lava Dart removal, Ren and Six, so on and so forth. Uh, Breathless Knight. I believe this is also a sketch art. It could just be weird art. I don't know. Or just the normal art, I guess. Um, Spirit Knight, Flying Lifelink. Another creature enters the battlefield under your control. That creature enters from a graveyard. Or you cast it from a graveyard, put a plus and plus counter on this creature. Uh, it's kind of meh. All right, let's get to the cards that everyone wants to hear about. The cards that I think are super awesome. Um, so our Planeswalkers to start with. Dakin Shadow Slayer. Dakin uh, enters the battlefield with a number of loyalty counters on him. Equal to the number of lands you control. Surveil 2. Exile target creature for minus three, uh, plus one surveil too, sorry. Minus three exile target creature. And then ultimate minus six, you may put an artifact card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. I think this card's pretty cool. Um, the surveil isn't bad, especially you play him on turn three, he automatically goes up to four. Um, you play him on turn three, you also can just have a three mana exile creature, which is kind of eh. I don't think that's very good, but you know, Played on turn four, comes down, immediately goes to one after that. It's still going to activation. I don't think this card's bad. I don't know if it's going to see play in any serious deck, but I think it's kind of cool. Garth One-Eyed, this card I think is pretty cool flavor-wise, and I think it's just a fun card. I don't think it's going to be that good or stand much play. Uh, it's a five-mana Wooberg spell. Tap, choose a card name that hasn't been chosen from among Disenchants, Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, Regrowth, and Black Lotus. Create a copy of the card with the chosen name. You may cast the copy. You still pay its mana cost. This is pretty cool. Um, notably, you're going to make a token copy of Black Lotus to put in your hand, or to basically not put in your hand. Um, but, but you get a cast. I think that's pretty cool, but yeah. Uh, anyway, then we have uh, Gidron Dihada, a Grixis Planeswalker, four mana, four, comes down four loyalty. Protection from permanence with corruption counters on it. Plus one, each opponent loses two life. You gain two life. Put a corruption counter on up to one to other on one other target creature or planeswalker. That's pretty cool that you can put it on a planeswalker. That means uh, plus to being able to put it on a creature helps her to protect herself further. Plus she goes up to five loyalty, which can be pretty difficult to take down in one turn without lightning bolts. Uh, gain control of target creature or planeswalker until the end of turn. Untap it. Put a corruption counter on it. It gains haste until the end of turn. Uh, so that's pretty cool as a minus three. And then minus seven, gain control of each permanent with a corruption counter on it. Uh, that's a pretty cool steal every, your opponent's board. 
I really like it. I'm super down with that ability. Um, overall, I think it's a pretty fun Grixis Planeswalker. I definitely want to play some matches with it. Try it out. Have some fun with it. Uh, and then the Planeswalker I'm most looking forward, Grist the Hunger Tide. As long as Grist the Hunger Tide isn't on the battlefield, it's a 1-1 insect creature in addition to its other types. Meaning it is a legendary Planeswalker creature. Uh, Grist. Plus one, create a 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature token. Then mill a card if you mill an insect. Uh, this way you put a loyalty counter on it. Minus two, sacrifice a creature. Um, when you do, destroy target creature or planeswalker. So that's super sweet and come down immediately. Sacrifice another creature and kill a planeswalker. Uh, or just a creature. And then minus five, each opponent loses life equal to the number of creature cards in all or in your graveyard. I don't think that part so much is going to be so awesome. But I still think the fact that you can get this card with Collect Company, you can get this card with El Domri's Call to search it out, or to Calling, I mean, Green Sun if it was legal and modern, all these things allow you to grist, and I think that's super sweet. Um, then Mirari's Wake, creatures can grow get plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, whenever you tap a land. Mana, add one mana of any type of land uh, that land could produce. Pretty cool, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Karth the Lion, uh, when it enters the battlefield, or a Planeswalker you control dies. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal a Planeswalker card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Planeswalker loyalty abilities, you activate cost an additional, mi or an additional minus one to activate. It's pretty cool. I like the searching up Planeswalkers part, plus as a four mana, three, five, I think it's got a decent body. I don't think it's going to be good. But I'll still probably try and play it just for some fun. Uh, Fire Ice. Fire, of course, deals two damage. It's up to uh, two targets. Ice, you tap something, draw a card. General Ferris Rockerick. This card I'm really excited for. Hexproof from Monocolored, which is pretty cool because most of the removals in the format are monocolored. Bolt can't kill it. Push can't kill it. Path can't kill it. Um... You have to have something like Lightning Helix. On Thin Ice can't kill it. Um, yeah. So much of the format cannot kill this card. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a 4-4 four, four red and white golem artifact creature token. Note, this is whenever you cast a multicolored spell. Not the first multicolored spell of the turn you cast. Whenever. Super excited for that card. I can't wait to play it. Um, then we have uh, Lonus Cryptozoologist. Cryptozoologist. Never another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control. Investigate, sacrifice X clues, target opponent reveals the top X cards of their library. You may put a non-land permanent card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Under your control, that player puts the rest of them on the bottom of their library in a random order. Um, This card's kind of cool. I don't think it's going to do much in standard, though. Or not standard, in modern. Master of Death enters the battlefield, surveils two at the beginning of your upkeep. If Master of Death is in your graveyard, you may pay one life if you do return it to your hand. Uh, I like this card as a potential discard outlet and a recursive card in general. I really like it. I don't think it's going to be that great, but I think it's a cool card. Um, plus, Master of Death and constantly coming back to life. Cool flavor. Um, moderation, you, can cast, you can't cast more than one spell each turn. Whenever you cast a spell, you draw a card. So... Uh, that means one spell your turn, one spell your opponent's turn. Um, I could see this in some kind of tempo-ish strategy, I guess, maybe, but I don't know. I, I think limiting you to one spell every turn is just a little too restrictive, but we'll see. Guru the Volatile, a Mardu-colored Elder Dragon, flying life link at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice it unless you pay Mardu. Uh... When it dies, deal 7 damage to each non-legendary creature. I think this card's pretty cool. It's expensive. Surprised to see Elder Dragons. I thought we I thought we only had the like two sets of Elder Dragons that existed, but it's cool to see a Mardu one now. Priests of Fell Rites. Pay 3 sacrifice. Or pay 3 life. Sacrifice priests. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only the sorcery. Then it has Unearth, which is pretty cool. Charles Agent, of course, uh, Cascade as a 2-2 for a 3-drop. Pretty sweet. Sterling Grove, other enchantments you control have Shroud. Notably, Shroud, not Hexproof, very important. It means you can't target your own spells either. Uh, pay one, sacrifice it, search your library for an enchantment card, reveal it, and then a shuffle and put it on top. 
of your library. Um, I am excited for this card. I think Enchantress is going to be a fun deck. I don't think it's going to be tier one or anything, but I think it's going to be super fun to play. This card really excites me. Um, Territory Kavu, another card we're going to be definitely playing. This has Domain. And then uh, when it attacks, you get to choose discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Or exile up to one target card from a graveyard. This is pretty cool. I love the incidental graveyard hate. This card is super sweet. I also love the being able to uh, filter through your hand. Uh, this card could be some kind of madness player because of the attack, discarding when you attack, um, as well as also just being an outright good card to play into a deck because you can discard cards you don't want and try and draw deeper into the good cards you care about. Usury Fortune's Flame. Uh, whenever it attacks, you choose a number between one and five. Flip that many coins. For each flip you win, draw a card. For each flip you lose, deals two damage to you. If you win five flips this way, you may cast spells from your hand this turn without paying their mana cost. So pretty sweet. If you hit five head, if you win five tosses, um, you get omniscience for a turn. If you miss though, you deal yourself a bunch of damage. Interesting, cool, flavorful card for fun. Yeah. Arcbound Shikari, first strike. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a bus and bus counter on each other artifact creature you control. Modular 2. Currently, right now, the Hardened Scales deck in Modern is green, black, or at least it was the last time I saw it. Um, interesting to see if there's a world where we are not playing green anymore. Um, I think Hardened Scales might be too important not to play, so maybe if this card is worth something people might want, maybe maybe we play it as a um, um, Naya deck. I could see that. Um... Although I don't know if this card just fits in with any of the cards we already have. I don't know. Um, and then, so next up, we have Itherstorm Sphinx. This card is pretty cool. I do actually like this card quite a bit. Um, it is a 9-mana Artifacts for Affinities Flying Cascade 4-4. Four four. Um, could be pretty cheap. Definitely could be a card that we play in some kind of Urza variant. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting card. Graceful Restoration, choose one, return target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield with an additional plus one plus encounter on it. Or uh, return up to two target creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, so interesting reanimate spell for five mana here. I kind of like it at the same time. Um, I think this could just be another cool Luris card. We'll see. Uh, we already saw Lazdo Chancellor. And most of the rest of these are, other than Vindicator, just kind of meh. Vindicator, I think, is great. I think this card's going to be one of the most played of these cards coming out. Um, yeah. And uh, Old Border Retro cards, Soul Herder, awesome. Ice Fang, awesome. Um, First Sliver, awesome. These uh, Extended Art cards are cool. Borderless cards are cool. Oh, that's Shardless Border. Oh, man. We don't have to get it like Stoneforge's. I think we're doing... Ooh, Vindicate? What? That's pretty dope. I'm not going to lie. All right, well, these two are on my radar now. We're going to be looking for them. All right, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. That's going to be our colorless review. Um, again, like I said, setless isn't necessarily all the way out yet, I don't believe, but I just need to get these done as soon as I could. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know I'm a little long-winded. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did hit that like button, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.